money that they've made. I don't understand why the University of Miami don't have the same facilities as the University of Alabama or Ohio State or any of the SC or any of these big time universities simply because again, Miami's putting people in the pros like they, they produce, you know, they, they, they're they a football factor. They, they churn them out. Even when they're not good, they're still putting people in the pros. So how he had to do that is beyond me. But it does speak volumes to why people like Erickson and Jimmy Johnson and other coaches have just said, you know what, Bush Davis, other coaches have said, you know what, I'm the hell out of here, man. Because, you know, it's funny. Those coaches left because they like, look, y'all not gonna, y'all not just gonna pimp us, but they don't have any problem pimping these young men. Ain't that about some BS? Now, what I'm gonna do is wrap up with two things. The first thing is my Heisman top four, and I'm giving the teams that, uh, as of today, I believe would be in the final four. I'm gonna start at number four, a dude who I've been talking about for the entire three years I've been on air, Ed Oliver, defensive tackle at the University of Houston. I'm hearing people like McShay talk about his hands and his feet and things like that. But one thing I do know about defensive tackle out of the University of Houston, Ed Oliver, is this. When you see him play, he jumps off the screen like nobody else in college football on the defensive side of the ball. They can talk this uh Nick Bosa and all this, but Ed Oliver is a dog. And the reason they give Nick Bosa a whole lot of love is because they know his family, they know his brother, they know his mother, they know his father and all this and all that. So, but me personally, I'm going with Ed Oliver. Kyler Murray, a uh, quarterback out of Oklahoma, is my number three dude. If the season ends today, he'll be the one, one of the four dudes invited to New York to get disappointed when uh, this dude, when, when the winner comes up. Kyler Murray has kicked ass on every level. He had one bad half of football, and he followed it up by kicking ass and taking names against the University of uh, Texas at the Red River Rivalry. He showed up big time. He had a bad game, but he made up for that bad game by kicking ass in the second half. Now, even though I said uh, the uh, quarterback at uh, University of uh, Alabama, Tonga, to, to, I'm not even going to try to butcher that young brother's name, but uh, even though I said he would be the number one pick, the reason I'm not, he is my number three. He, would, he wouldn't win the Heisman if it was on me. It's because he would be my number three guy because he hasn't had any big time Heisman moments. I know it should be go to the best player. I understand that the dude who's playing best should get it and this, that, and the third. But you still need that moment. You still need to be able to come up when it counts. The best player in college football is the dude who kicks ass when that, when all the chips are down. And the reason I'm giving it to my man Dwayne uh, Haskins is because of that. Ohio State University, and I know you, I'm penalizing my man because his team is great and the rest of these teams are pretty good, but my man is doing the damn thing. And that's just the name of that tone. Dwayne Haskins has been in closer games. He's made bigger. Angry black man, what's good? What's good, baby? He's he's done things in the fourth quarter. He probably, you know, he's his statistics in the fourth quarter and in close games put him in front of uh, Tonga and Tua Tonga Tia Viola. I got it right then. So I'm going with Dwayne Haskins for the University of uh, Ohio State University as my Heisman Trophy winner. And with that being said, I'm going to give him a round of applause. Now, the NFL, we had a big weekend with the NFL uh, this weekend. And it was a very interesting situation. Uh, it was capped off by this Sunday night game that everybody loved. It was the old guard coming in with the new. It kind of reminds me, if you're an old school cat and you know football, uh, it kind of reminded me of when Dan Fouts was on his way out. And him and Dan Marino shot it out on a Monday night. Uh, and it looks like this dude Patrick Mahone is the real deal and he ain't even Evander Holyfield son that was a whack ass joke but it looks like he's the real deal being coached by Andy Reid doesn't hurt and also having these uh, explosive weapons on the offensive side of the football ain't hurting them at all if the Kansas City Chiefs get Houston back 
and, and, and get the safety back bail. I don't know if the Kansas City Chiefs can be stopped in this NFL. This is why last week I made the proclamation, should NFL defensive players get paid more than offensive players? Because everybody keep, keeps telling me, hey man, the NFL is a passing league and uh, uh, you get offensive and defensive players complaining about the rules. So if the rules are slighted for offense and that means the quarterback isn't the most important guy on the field anymore. See, it's easy to say when you got uh, uh, Richard Dent and Lawrence Taylor and Derek Thomas and those dudes blowing down your back and trying to knock your head off. It's imp it's easy to say that that the quarterback is the most important player on the field. That's that's easy. That's that's the, hey, without him we can't win. But if I make that man's job easier, his importance is decreased. So. Should, the question I want to bring up today is are we living in a world where as NFL players, well the MVP in, in particular should the MVP be reevaluated? Because it's only been one dude in the 99 year history of the NFL on the defensive side of the game to win league MVP and that's one the one great late well, ooh, excuse me and that is the great Lawrence Taylor. I almost said that wrong word. I'm not even going to say that word. But that is the great Lawrence Taylor. If you are making it more difficult for me to do my job and I'm still able to do my job, should I not be at the forefront of the MVP conversation? If you don't understand what I'm saying, all you have to do is go to the middle of the map, right by the bottom of the Lake Michigan, and see it's this town, it's this gigantic town called Chicago, Illinois. That team, that city has a team by the name of the Chicago Bass. Even though the Chicago Bass lost this weekend, one of the reasons they lost this weekend is because Khalil Mack bruised his ankle. It was not the Khalil Mack that we were used to seeing. And his dominance has put the Bass, and as you'll see in my power rankings later, at the in at the forefront of conversations of contenders, so explain to me how, if Khalil Mack has put himself, has put the Bears on the map, and every time Khalil Mack has a monster game, the Bears easily win, and they should have won this weekend. How is it that the MVP shouldn't go to a defensive player? See, you got people like Tom Brady, Aaron Rodgers, Broke Ben Roethlisberger. Uh, Philip, well, Dick, uh, Breeze, Broke Ben, Roethlisberger, Tom Brady, Aaron Rodgers, they all talk about playing to their, into their 40s. The reason they're playing into their 40s is because you can't beat on them like you can beat on everybody else. You can beat on Joey Bosa, you can beat on J.J. Watt, you can beat on Aaron Donald, you can beat on these corners out here, Richard Sherman and Patrick Peterson, you can beat on these linebackers, you can beat on these running backs and these wide receivers, you can beat on these offensive linemen, but you can't beat on the quarterback. So, of course, your ass want to play because everybody else hurting you not. With that being said, that game Sunday was off the chain. But the problem is, it would look like an Xbox game. It looks like nobody's playing defense. This goes right, this flies right into the face of what I've been telling y'all. Just so happens that Tom Brady and Sonny Michelle put together a running game Whereas Sonny Michelle carried the ball 24 times Sunday. And again, I'm not even going to beat it beat it down this week. But guess what? The New England Patriots just happened to run the ball 38 times. Even though we all know the game came down to the buzzer, but they ran the ball 38 times. Did not punt. Poor defense on the Kansas City Chiefs part. But the Kansas City Chiefs ran the ball 17 times. I'm going to keep just identifying that as one of the major reasons you get your ass kicked in the NFL. Because if you can't stop the run, if you don't run the football, you can't stop the run. And Kareem Hunt is a reason that you could have won this game because you could have just ran the ball down the Patriots' throats. But either way, Patrick Mahomes stepped up, and it's the, it's, he the LONS, the leader of the new school. He's going to be one of the dudes that you're going to hear about for a very long time in the NFL. With that being said, we're going to move on to those very best that we've been talking about. The Chicago Bears are a very interesting football team in the NFL today. You allow Frank Gore to get 105 yards, I mean 101 yards rushing. You allow our, uh, Wilson to heat your asses up. 
And guess what the Bears didn't do? The Bears did not get Jordan Howard running. How in the hell do you have a running back running at a clip of 4.9 per rush? His longest rush was 19 yards. And you don't continue to get him the ball. Nobody on the Bears that was that significant had a bad day rushing. When you are up 21 14 at the beginning of the fourth quarter, you should just salt the game over and run. This is a mistake made by a young and inexperienced uh, uh, offensive coordinator turned head coach. Hopefully, he's going to learn from this. People, this is not a running lead. Mitchell, and even if it is a passing lead, Mitchell Trubisky is not the dude who you want to keep passing with. He may be the future, which I don't believe. He may have a whole lot of talent. He got a lot of arm talent. Talent and arm talent are two different things. That's like saying, just because I can hit a jump shot, I'm a good basketball player. Again, I'm going to harken back to my coach, Jimmy Fields. All y'all out here playing football, only 10% of y'all football players. Mitchell Trubisky is not a dude who I think is a football player. With that being said, the Chicago Bears look very good in the first half. They just because they are young and inexperienced, they were and they have an inexperienced coach. They were unable to close the door, and they lost this game, which takes me to a ass whooping or betrubbing or or a beat down or whatever adjective you want to do to describe Mister X Y J Banana, uh, A.K.A. the dumbest coach in the NFL. Hold on, the key to the series is Jordan Howard. Angry black man just chimed in, people. The key to the series is Jordan Howard. After two great runs, he asked to sub out and never went back on the field. That was uh, that was an OT. Nagy used the timeout and came back with the uh, conservative game plan. Exactly. Why are you having a conservative game plan when you had a hell of a game plan to get you in a position to win in the first place? Thank you, angry black man. Hey, and by the way, y'all, tomorrow night, y'all know it's the angry black man show on Spreaker 2. Dope ass show. I, I listen every week, man. I participate. It's a, it's a, it, we, we have created a culture on Spreaker.com. Uh, I'm not sure if he's an X-Squad affiliate, but they have a crew to X-Squad. Man, people, 24 hours a day, you can listen to something that's, that, that's catered to your mental, your psyche, and speaking the way you speak. So, man, check out the angry black man, and then follow the people in his chat room, and you'll be entertained, whether it be conversation, whether it be other sports shows, dope like this and his, whether it be music, whatever you need, it's on Spreaker.com, X Squad affiliates, Angry Black Man, and the Bench. Holla at your boy. But back, uh, me and, and back, uh, and now a word from your host. Uh, but back to these the dumbass Raiders and that dumbass coach, Mister YJ Banana himself. I am about to put on my conspiracy brother hat. Okay, I got somebody else chimed in. Yes, sir. Part of X. Yep. Part of X Squad Radio. Check out X Squad Network on Spreaker.com. Please do, man. Follow the Angry Black Man. Doc there, the Angry Black Man. Y'all gonna love it, man. But I'm gonna put my conspiracy theory hat on, man. Y'all know I'm always conspiracy brother. And if you don't know who conspiracy brother is, you need to check out this old B movie, B level movie uh, with Eddie Griffin. Uh, it's, dope. It's, it's I actually like the movie, but I'm not gonna tell you it's a great movie. It's, it's just a funny ass movie. But Anyway, Dave Chappelle is Conspiracy Brother, and I am currently assuming the role of Conspiracy Brother. And the reason I'm consuming the role of Conspiracy Brother is this. It's another brother whose job is in jeopardy that I believe, and he goes by the name of Reggie. Reggie McKenzie, the general manager of your boys, Oakland Raiders. I'm not no damn Raider fan anymore. Oh, I'm, I'm a die. Uh, win, lose, entire Raider Nation till I die. But until and for the next nine years, I ain't trying to hear none of it. Until they fire this goofy ass coach, and they're not gonna fire him when they when they owe him one hundred million dollars. This is where the conspiracy kicks in, at people. Reggie McKenzie, all of his picks are being butchered. They're being benched. They've been traded, and everything that Reggie did over the last three years has been dis dismantled. Because John Gruden wants to be the man. There's no way in hell a dude of this elk. John Gruden ain't the greatest. He's not Bill Belichick. He's a disciple of Andy Reid. Which lets me know he does know football very well. He is a Super Bowl winning.